Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part two of my build of the TD4 Super Avanti Tamiya kit. And uh, as I did in part one, I'm going to be whizzing along through the build, but hopefully I will be focusing on most of the main points and uh, any little tips that I can give you along the way. Uh, this is where we got to last time, so you can see we've got the rear gearboxes fully assembled, and uh, we've got the rear differential in there, and the rear suspension arms on. Oh yeah, and there's the motor in there as well too. That was up to step 12, so opening bag C, straight on to step 13. Which is making up the rear dampers. As you can see, I've already done the one. It's quite simple, um, so I'll just show you a couple of little things that I do when I'm building my shocks. For a start off, it shows putting some of the damper oil on the O-rings that are going to seal the bottom of the shock. But as you can see, I've used some grease on there, and it's just this tammy grease, I think it's silicon grease. I think that helps seal it in better than just putting the oil on. And uh, then you put your bottom cap on. Uh, the other thing is, don't tighten that up until you've got the uh, the shaft through. Uh, else, once it's compressed, it's going to be forcing those O-rings um, open or, or wider, and we don't want to damage those O-rings. And the only other thing that I do differently is I put my finger over the hole at the bottom, and I fill up the shock first with oil. Once it's almost full, I get the piston and just push that in and wiggle it around so you find the hole and then we can just push that in obviously you can move your finger as soon as the, uh, the shaft comes out the bottom slowly push it in and the reason I do that is it stops air being trapped underneath that piston so you should have little or no bubbles coming up and yeah that usually works for me so I'm just going to top that up put the cap on and you do want it so you get oil over spilling because that shows it's full right to the top and now we can do the bottom and the top cap up against each other as tight as you can okay so all we need to do now is get uh, the spring and the other parts on so with both your shocks made up step 16 is just popping those on and then you've got these two parts here which are de-sixed these plastic parts with two tiny little cap screws I think they're for holding on the, the mud guards, I could be wrong, but I think that's what they're for. So this step is just popping on the shocks. Like so. Step 17 is attaching the upper deck, which I think is this part. But you've got the side covers that is going to go on as well. And you've also got these captive nuts that need to be put in uh, towards the front here. I think that's something for doing holding the suspension that pivots uh, but yeah we'll get those in but the first thing I notice here is it says remove and so I think you get this part it's the way up it should be and then you need to remove this edge here and I think it's to protect the battery casing I'm not sure so what I'm doing is I'm just going to use a knife and just trim away that edge maybe you can see there um, that that edge has been taken off. I'm just going to flat that off with a bit of uh, wet or dry paper just to smooth it off. But uh, yeah, so that's what you need to do first before you start screwing this thing together. And then it shows putting these two plastic parts, A18, and they're going to go underneath here. And one there. With a countersunk screw. And one on the other side with an ordinary 8mm cap screw. And it should look like that when you've done. Next you want to put these A15 parts, pop one in both sides. Like that. And you need four of these A6 spacers that are going to go in between this part and the chassis. This should be tricky. Oh well it wasn't too bad in the end. So yeah, get those four screws in. And then to finish off we've just got these captive nuts so I've got the one this side, might be tricky for you to see just fit the other one so you get your 3 mil nut and it goes in there and if you can see that just about then you've got this little plastic part A28 sits over the top and then you've got the tiny 2x8 screw that just holds that in place Step 18 is making up the servo saver and this is a high torque servo saver with the three uh, springs so you've got your two gold springs and then you've got your grey one and it should like this when you've uh, assembled it so you've got the two gold 
springs on the inside and then the graver on the outside and I've got to say it takes a bit of force to get those on guys but be patient and you'll get them on to whichever part fits your servo Q1 or Q3 there's a Tamiya 1 and a Sanwell 1 um, the Tamiya 1 fits mine I've gone for an Etronix digital servo and this is the one with the splines that fit this servo so you do need a low profile servo so it's a lot shallower than your standard servos and uh, this one fits so this is the one if you need the numbers there they are so obviously I have made sure I've plugged this in and I've centered up this servo so it's uh, right in the middle now and now I can go and uh, follow these diagrams so what you need to do uh, with this one I've gone for um, this part B which it says is for a Tamiya servo which is Q2 and I've attached the ball end as it shows here just pop that on um, it says it's for a shorter throw if it doesn't work I can always revert to um, the alternative one that was provided but I'll give this a go and we'll see how it goes from there so now copying the alignment of that diagram is basically um, going straight across and that ball joint should be in the middle of uh, horizontal yeah I think that looks about right so I'm just going to get this part on now which is Q4 and then put my screw in step 20 is attaching the servo now so we have to put these A20 brackets onto the bottom of the servo and then screw it into the chassis so there it is it's just the four screws and washers you've got that spacer in between A19 and you've got that bracket there now I know that this does move I've seen it on other videos especially uh, Michael of Nordic RC Visions where he's got it it's really he's moving all over the place but Rob Brennan my friend's done his and he steers fine with it with the standard mounting and Nanny RC also says leave it as it is so I'm going to try it like this first so in it's going to go uh, with these two countersunk screws and it just locates into the holes there so I'll just get the screws in now it's time to open parts bag D and on step 21 which is the gearbox front cover uh, which I think basically is this part L1 you just need to put in your 5mm ball connectors one there and one there with the foams on and then you can see these metal parts MD7 which is this here and there which are the pivots for the rocker arms those go on with a tiny 5mm countersunk screw from underneath and I have put a bit of thread lock into these threads because these screws are very short, I'll just show you the ones that go on the top there you go, tiny little thing so yeah just put a bit of uh, thread lock in there just to hold these in place you never know, just in case then you need to make up two of these rocker arms it's basically your plastic part C5 with two 5mm ball joints again and then you've got your 850 bearings, so you've got one in each side and then just copy the alignment of the diagram they're both the same these rockers so one goes on each side like that then you've got your C4 kind of plastic washer and that 5mm screw and that just holds the rockers on and then it's just a case of making two of these front upper arms you've got a ball joint pointing up and the other one pointing down and uh, as I showed in the last video a uh, good tip for this is to use a 7mm socket much easier to do these up with that and saves your fingers getting sore so the last step is just connecting those ball joints and it should look something like this when you're finished step 22 is making up what it says gears front but this is basically the front drive for the prop shaft and I don't know if you can see but in there there's the spring that it shows here and it does say to put a bit of glue on the bottom of it which I have done uh, stop that from coming out so get your 1050 bearing pop that on first and your bevel gear which is A27 and the silver tuba 9.8 shaft goes through that hole and then this is the trickier bit you've got to fit this into the slot like that and then you've got to get the uh, circlip on or the e-clip as they call it this, uh, this tiny black thing here and that's going to hold that to bevel gear in place okay I hope you can see that so that's on fixed in place it does wobble about a bit but I think that's how it should be then you've just got your three shims 
and your other bearing. So that's the three shims and the other 1050 and uh, that's that shaft done. Now the next step is doing the front differential and this is exactly the same as the rear that I showed in part one of this uh, build series so I'll put a link up here and you can check that out if you want and I'll just get on and build this now. Okay so that's the diff made up you might just be able to see there that's plastic part A5 or, or one of the tabs on it anyway there's a tab on each side that sticks into this slot and uh, after practicing on the first diff I found this time it's useful to get a ruler and put it in that slot like that and then push down on that A5 part as you screw in from the other end you can just push together and uh, that will stop the thread from spinning inside that plastic A5 part and as you can see there's just like a millimetre left now that I've uh, adjusted it so that it doesn't spin when I hold each end there's just that tiny gap so that's uh, for reference should be something like that step 24 is making up the front idler gear and this is it when it's done should look something like this you've got the bevel gear on the front there held on by that tiny black circlip I don't know if you can see it in this light and uh, just a word of warning be very careful with these bearings the 840 and the 950 there um, it's easy to get those mixed up with the other size bearings just to use the uh, guide on the left and match them up uh, they are exactly to size so yeah that's that made up so on to step 25 we're going to put this into the gearbox for this you're going to need part L8 which is the lower part of the gearbox I think and you need to get the uh, prop drive that you made up earlier pop that into place and then we've got to put this part L2 onto here like that and it attaches from underneath with a tiny little 2x5 cap screw like that I've no idea what it does it doesn't seem to stop it from moving around but anyway that's what it says so that's what I've done and now I've fitted the washers and the bearings to the diff that can pop into the front there and then the idler gear goes in so I'll just get some grease onto these parts and then in step 26 we can attach the two halves of the front gearbox see I'll put a bit of AW grease on this part here on the top part we made earlier so that goes together and I'm going to put in the nine screws now all the nine screws are in I'll show you there's one there one there three four five six seven and then eight and nine and I'm happy to report after doing all those up there are no gaps anywhere around the seal not that I can see anyway I've had a good close look and uh, if you just give that drive shaft a turn or the prop shaft drive a turn it should all be moving quite freely and hopefully Everything's like all okay and ready to go inside that gearbox. Step 27 is making up the steering linkage. So get this part, K3, and put the two ball ends in and uh, the dust covers on there. Then you've got here, shows the two 730 bearings, just pop into the top. This part, K8, again, you've got a bearing in the top and the bottom, but they're 850s this time. And uh, you pop another 5mm ball connector on there, ball joint and another dust cover and that's that part and then K6 it's just a case of putting the bearing in each side the 850s and then we've got to use the two 8mm screws you go through the bearings and we're going to screw them into this part there and into K8 And that's your steering linkage complete. In step 28 we're going to attach that linkage now to the front gearbox. So first thing I've done is make up the uh, two arms. Again note the orientation of the ball cups. Uh, copy that diagram down there. They're both the same. Then get your gearbox and you've got to put these two MD6, these steel posts, one there and one there. And they are with a really short um, six millimeter countersunk screws which go in here get your steering linkage 
and pop on the uh, tie rods and again you've got to make sure you get the direction of these uh, knurled adjusters correct so they're pointing to the right as you're looking at this so there's that one with the knurled part pointing to the right it's simply a case then of popping the bearings onto those posts we've just attached and that's your steering linkage in place and then in step 29 we're going to attach that front gearbox to the chassis itself so it's just a case of offering this up notice there's two tabs that kind of poke through the chassis there so that's all lined up and you've just got to get the two 8mm countersunk screws in those two holes there they turn the chassis over and you've got the two 10mm screws that just go in there and in there and with those four screws done up it's uh, held on quite securely now and all we've got to do is put in the uh, prop shaft so it's just a case of putting it in the front joint cup first against that spring we put in before and we should be able to pull that back and yep pop it into the rear so there you go that's the end of step 29 we've got the front and the rear gearboxes connected now and uh, as the next step is opening bag E I think this is a good point to uh, call this part 2 of the build to a halt and I uh, hope you catch me on the next one where with a bit of luck We'll be getting this chassis complete. Cheers. Bye.